Hello summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Crumbs and I'm here with our 1221 low elo tier list. Our regular tier list, which we post with the patch rundown and mid patch updates is aimed at around a high gold to platinum skill level. This one covers everything below that. Obviously any tier list is a bit nuanced, but in general, this is a great way to know what champions to pick and which to avoid to instantly give you a better shot at winning your solo queue games. And one last thing before we jump into the list, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos and guides like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players, and they're available 24-7 just waiting to share everything they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head over for some professional help now. As always, we're starting with our top laners. We'll be moving Singed back up to the OP tier. Singed has a slight bit of a learning curve. You aren't gonna queue up and play him for the first time and look like a god. In fact, you're probably gonna have to int a few games to really understand how he works because there's a lot of limit testing to be done. Proxying isn't always as simple as sitting between the two turrets and taking farm. You need to know how long you can sit between those two turrets before you need to execute and how to effectively waste the enemy team's time without just giving over kill after kill. Also, it's worth noting that proxying isn't always the only way to play Singed. He has a way stronger laning phase than most people give him credit for. It's not uncommon to get kills at level 2 or 3 against foes that disrespect how much damage he can do in extended trades, especially when you bring Ignite. Urgot also moves up to the OP tier. Juggernauts in general are just a really solid class of champion, especially in the lower elos. They do a ton of damage, are mechanically pretty simple, and are durable enough that you don't throw the game by making a small mistake. Urgot is probably the closest you get to a hyper carry as far as Juggernauts go. Early on, he has a bit of a slow start, but as the game goes on, he ramps up super hard. In the upper elos, Wukong's buff last patch pretty much had no impact on his top lane performance. He's still average there, but since games tend to drag on longer in the lower ranks, a champion's teamfight power generally means a lot more, so he's performing much better down here, so we're promoting him to the S tier. For Set, the exact opposite happened. We thought the nerf wouldn't really hit him as hard as it did, so we left him in the S tier, but his performance dropped off enough that it warrants him being demoted to the A tier. Heimerdinger drops off to the A tier as well. He's still good enough that you can safely blind pick him, but you'll definitely get mixed results depending on what you're against. You'll always have a strong laning phase, but the issue is that as the game goes on, his impact can vary. If you get outscaled in the side lane, you'll be hard pressed to group and make plays with your team. Swain sort of fell off through the cracks and wasn't on this tier list, so we're adding him now as a B tier pick. If you can get a good matchup, i.e. someone that can't force all ins on you and kill you, Swain is a really strong choice since he can hard carry fights later on. But in a bad lane, like against Fiora or Irelia, you'll just be feeding a champion that can easily take over the game and 1v9 in a side lane. So save him for when you know who you're up against. Udir gets dropped all the way to the D tier. Since the AP Bruiser build fell off, top lane Udir just doesn't really do as well anymore. He can't really force trades, nor does he have great wave clear. You just end up under your turret the entire game, and he's a champion that you need to snowball with to be strong enough in the mid game. Now for the jungle, here's our list. While we did just demote him to the lowest tier in the top lane, down here in the jungle, we're moving Udir up to the OP tier. While the AP Bruiser build does still work pretty decently, the real carry build is the AD one with Trinity Force and Q Max. Think of AD Udir as Master Yi with a lot more presence early game. I know they may not have exactly the same kits, but with the AD build, you sort of play him the same way. You reach two items and start looking for constant picks on your enemies, and once you're at three plus items, you can start to group up and mow down the entire enemy team in 5v5s. Volibear is also moving up to the OP tier. It wasn't that long ago that Volibear was the best jungler in the game, but after some hard hitting nerfs, he fell to being just pretty good. But as plenty of other top picks have been nerfed after that, he's been slowly rising back up to the top. 
It's pretty hard to say where Belveth is going to end up after this round of nerfs. They seem significant enough to move her down to the A tier, but don't be too surprised if she was still in the S tier afterwards. Just check back in the next video to see how things pan out once the patch goes live. We'll also be moving Fiddlesticks down to the A tier. He just doesn't do quite as well in lower elos as he does in the upper ranks. There are plenty of other farming champions that do fine down here, like Yi and Shivana, so the issue isn't his lack of presence early game. It's more likely that his biggest strength is specifically team fighting. It's a bit harder for lower elo players to coordinate and get on the same page so you can find those windows to land some fat game winning ults. Moving on to the mid lane, here's our list. Here in mid, we're moving Set back up to the OP tier. While he did fall off a bit in the top lane, you basically can't even tell he got nerfed last patch when he's played mid. He dominates melee champions by forcing trades every time they move up to farm, and against ranged foes, he's still sustaining through their poke with a combination of Second Wind, Doran's Shield, and his passive. Tristana also gets moved up to the OP tier here. Tristana is easily one of the most slept on mid laners in the game. She occasionally starts to trend in high elo, which has a trickle down effect on the lower ranks, but then people just forget about her again and I don't really know how or why. She has some of the highest kill potential of any champion in the game at levels 2 to 3, and if you get a single kill early game, you can usually take that small lead and run with it. Unlike other early game bullies, she doesn't fall off either. In fact, I think she's pretty close to what you'd consider a hyper carry, so you can be your own late game insurance too. As with the top lane, Wukong moves up to the S tier here as well, thanks to the buffs he received last patch. Jace is moving up to the A tier. This is a bit of a surprise. We knew his recent buffs would make him better in the higher elo, since Jace tends to be a strong popular pick there. But Jace has become pretty solid across all ranks as a mid laner. Victor moves down to the A tier. He's a pretty decent scaling carry, but he just doesn't have as much of an impact as the higher tiered options do at this rank. Malzahar also gets demoted to the A tier. If you just want a champion that neutralizes the laning phase and coasts to a win most of the time, then Malzahar is still a really good choice for you. Out of all the minimal effort champions in the game, he's definitely the best. He's just pretty hard capped on his upper ceiling for carrying games where everyone else is doing poorly. Now let's move things down to the bottom lane. It seems we underestimated just how good Ziggs' buff would be for him last patch. In the upper elos, we knew small differences like that would be enough to make him OP, but down here, you generally need more of a push. Either way, start abusing this pick ASAP. He's at low effort while still having a huge impact, making him one of the easiest champions to use for this end of season push. Cassiopeia has been considered one of the better mage bot laners for years now, but she's another champion that we sort of overlooked when we made this tier list, so we're adding her now. Better late than never, right? She's a really strong option, viable as both a farming laner and kill lane champion that pairs well with pretty much all supports. We'll be placing her in the S tier. Jinx's recent buffs barely did anything for her in the lower ranks, so we're moving her down to the B tier. She's not awful, but when it comes to marksmen, they sort of all have the same role in the game, so being meh is basically the same as being bad. Vayne moves down to the C tier. Even at the highest level, where players have really good mechanics, Vayne is in a pretty bad spot. The only time she's ever really worth picking is if the enemy team has at least three super tanky targets. And even then, it's iffy if she's better than some other choices. With her skill floor being so high, if she's doing bad up there, it's no shock that she's struggling in the lower brackets as well. To finish things off, we've got our supports. Sona moves up to the OP tier. Again, the topic of game length is relevant here. Lower elo games drag on forever, and Sona is essentially the most hyperscaling champion in the support role. Early on, the name of the game is simple, survive laning phase and make it to team fights. Once you make it to that part of the game where you're constantly grouped, her impact is huge. One really important tip for you new Sona players is to abuse the hell out of her W power cord. It is by far the most broken part of her kit, but a lot of Sonas still do Q power cord for damage or E for slow. W's damage reduction is like having an extra exhaust every few seconds, so trust me, use it every time you can. 
Zach has been performing super well again lately, so we're moving him up to the S tier. While he is a really strong pick, do note there is obviously a bit of a learning curve. When you go in with Zach, you go in deep. If you just jump right in and force engages at bad times, you're gonna take a lot of damage and often just straight up die. With yet another nerf coming his way, we're moving Blitzcrank down to the A tier. This may be a bit of an overreaction since all of his catch potential is there with his hook, but his all-in strength in lane is gonna be a lot weaker. Swain moves down to the A tier for support. This is due to his situationalness. With a carry that can match your early game aggression like Tristana or Seraphine, Swain is a pretty scary support. But with more farm-oriented picks, he's just okay in lane. Ash somehow wasn't on the list as a support before this, so we're adding her in as a B-tier pick. It's kind of surprising how her performance is this low. She has super strong laning, with good poke from her W and ranged autos, and her post-6 all-in potential is super good with an aggro AD carry. Later on, out of the laning phase, her ult gives you tons of pick potential thanks to its low cooldown, but in practice, things just don't work out that well, and she just feels kind of average. Set moves up to the C tier. As the bot lane meta has shifted away from being purely enchanters and scaling hyper carries over the past few months, Set has slowly become less and less of a trash pick. That said, he's definitely not good. There are only a few matchups where he's pickable, and even then, there are likely always better options. Finishing things off, we'll be moving Trundle all the way down to the D tier. Trundle was once at least good as a counterpick to tank support. His pillar could block their team from following up on their engage, while his ultimate allowed him to steal their stats and make them easy for allies to shred. But he's been so heavily nerfed time after time due to his strength in other roles that now, as a support, he's a complete troll pick. He provides little to no pressure in almost any matchup, and out of lane, he's just always outclassed by how much utility meta picks bring. So there you have it. That's our 1221 low elo tier list. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Since making this list involves going over all the champions in all the roles, I'm sure we overlooked a pick here or there. So feel free to let us know if you think we missed something down in the comment section below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until then, good luck on the rift, and may the LP God smile down upon you.